Okay. Uh, so we are going to do next the low frequency response analysis for this cascode amplifier. I have uh, tried to compactly write down all the important DC parameters and midband parameters that we just calculated. So here is our collector current, uh, our nominal midband gain, our effective midband gain. And then R in and R out. I've noted that in my R in calculation, I have excluded RS. So it's R in looking into the base of Q1. Um, and in my R out calculation, I have excluded RL. So it's just um, the resistance looking into the collector of Q2. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and start uh, looking at the lower frequencies. Um, so low frequency response. And our goal here, again, is to calculate the value of FL the low um, corner frequency or the low cutoff frequency for the amplifier. Uh, we can see that now uh, we have four capacitors, uh, four coupling and bypass capacitors, as opposed to three. And so we will do, have to do an extra calculation, but the methodology hasn't changed. We're still going to uh, use the dominant pole approach. And so we're going to calculate the cutoff frequency due to each one of those capacitors independently, and then take the largest of those cutoff frequencies to be the dominant cutoff frequency. It's an approximation, uh, but it works in most cases. So let's go ahead and calculate the low frequency due to CC1. And that's going to be 1 over 2 pi, uh, 7 in resistance connected to CC1, which is RS plus R in, uh, times CC1. So 1 over 2 pi, 1K plus 16K times 1 micro. So that gives me 61 hertz. The low cutoff frequency due to um, CC2 will be 1 over 2 pi. And in this case, it's um, RL in series with R out, which we calculated, times CC2. 1 over 2 pi, 100k plus 5k times um, one micro. And this gives me around uh, 1.51 Hertz. And next my bypass capacitors, uh, I'm gonna do CVE first and then CV, uh, CV which uh, doesn't have a value. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it one, one microfarad. So my low cutoff frequency due to CBE will be 1 over 2 pi, 7 in resistance connected to CBE times CBE. And let's go ahead and calculate now that 7 in resistance. So we take a look at CBE and we see on the uh, one side this is going to ground, on the other side we have RE2 in parallel with uh, the series combination of RE1 plus little RE1 plus 1 over beta uh, times whatever is connected to the base of Q1 by the inverse reflection rule. Uh, so that will be um, 1 over beta times R2, which is connected to ground via CV in parallel with R3, in parallel with RS, all that divided by beta. So it will be 402.5 in parallel with um, an RE1 plus little RE1, we've already calculated that to be 110. So to save space, I'm already gonna write that there. And then this will be R2, um, 3K in parallel with 5K in parallel with 1K divided by 100. And I've calculated that overall resistance to be um, around 91 ohms, the parallel combination. So I'll write it here, 91 ohms. Now I can enter that here, 1 over 2 pi, 91 times 10 micro. This is 162.4 hertz. And finally, I'm going to calculate the low cutoff frequency due to the base um, bypass capacitance. 
CB. And similar approach, 1 over 2 pi, 7 in resistance connected to CB times CB. And that 7 in resistance, you can just go ahead and take a look at it. On the one side, we have the capacitor connected to ground. On the other side, we have R1 in parallel with R2 um, in series with R3 plus uh, in R3, excuse me, in parallel with RS, in parallel with RIB looking into the base of transistor Q1. So it's kind of a long expression, but just bear with me. So I have um, R1 in parallel with R2, that's in series with the parallel combination of RS, R3, and RIB1, which is beta times resistance connected to emitter of Q1. So little RE1, capital RE1. And then all this in parallel with uh, the resistancing in the base of Q2, which is going to be something rather large because it's going to be uh, beta times, you know, little re2 in series with um, capital or little ro. And so we're going to ignore that uh, component just because it's going to be rather large. So this is approximately equal to, or I can, I guess, write it here, beta times little arrow one. So I'm ignoring this because it's large. And then I have R1, which was 51K in parallel with, and then I have, um, I think I'm going to take this in stages because I don't have enough space to just write out all the numbers. Uh, so let me just do it over here. Uh, this is 110 little re1 plus capital re1. So if you multiply that times beta, that's going to give you 11k. And then r3 is uh, 5k. And RS is 1K, R2 is 3K, and R1 is 51K. So when you um, solve for all those resistances, I get 830 ohms. times one microfarad for CB, and that gives me 191 hertz. And so when I look at uh, the four uh, frequency values, 61 hertz, 1.5 hertz, 162, and 191, I can see that 191 is the dominant. Now notice that uh, 162.4 is fairly close to it, and so we expect that we are going to incur um, a larger error than, than typical uh, when I approximate my low cutoff frequency as being 191. It's really not worth, you know, redoing all the calculations in a more exact manner because you're always going to incur errors. And so uh, the idea is that the 191 hertz will get you close enough to uh, the region where you are expecting to be, and then you can use a simulator um, to, you know, fine tune your values to get you closer to whatever you need it to be. Uh, or if you're doing an analysis to get a closer value. So let's go ahead and we're going to approximate our FL as being 191 hertz. And that's it. The next thing is we are going to um, look at the high frequency response. Thank you.